All right, today I have a carrier out of a Dano 44. I'm going to be putting a torque locker in. They own Aussie lockers now. I chose the torque design. And I'm also going to be installing a new Yukon gear and axle uh, center pin. Part numbers are YSPXP-013. This is different than the Dana 44 that is in the new JKs, I believe. And then we have a Dana 44 torque locker. So to pull the carrier was somewhat of a pain. I ended up buying one of these case spreaders off of eBay. Came in from, really all it said was uh, Shanghai, China. So uh, we'll see if I get the Rona. And then I hooked up a two jaw puller. You can rent this from AutoZone. And then I just used that, uh, wrapped it around right here. And just, I didn't have to pull on it too much. I, the reason I did that is I didn't want to push the case too far. I believe you can only spread the case uh, 0.015 inches. Otherwise, you can damage it, so just to be safe, instead of cranking on it real hard until I can pull it out by hand, I just opened it up slightly and tapped it out that way. First things first, you need to take out all these bolts. I'm going to mark a line here. That way I can align the gear back up exactly where it was and try and knock the gear down. Uh, when I knock it, I'm going to put two pieces of wood here and maybe some rags just to absorb some of the drop uh, keep in mind these are left hand thread so it's righty loosey lefty tidy uh, i've heard of people breaking the bolts off because they don't know that this is going to be pretty interesting because i do not have a large vise so i'm going to have to get creative on how i'm going to i'm going to hold it down and, and actually pull it out right, i got the ring pulled off the carrier the bolts are not left-hand thread. Uh, whenever I read that, they were definitely wrong, and I stripped it right out. Uh, so what I did to hold the carrier is I made this little jig and just screwed it into my workbench. It's just two by fours, uh, all screwed in, and they fit kind of snug right here, and then I could crank on them. Uh, I ended up, I have a tiny air setup, but I used a little earthquake impact but you should be able to use the same method and get them loose with just a regular ratchet punching the pin out i ended up having to go buy a set of these longer punch uh sets i got a set from harbor freight the uh, set i had just weren't wasn't long enough so i bought these long drive pinch punch set from harbor freight i want to say it was like six bucks uh, super nice uh, I'm using my jig that I used to, uh, and I don't know if you call it a jig, but using what I was using to hold the carrier to loosen the bolts, uh, I'm using it to punch out the pin. I've hit the wood now, I'm just going to kind of rotate it on the side, push it all the way through. And then the pin itself should just slide right out. And I've got the cross pin out. And now you should be able to just turn your spider gears. And it will follow. Bam. <laughs> there you go. Now they're out. Alright, I have everything set up to install the torque locker into my carrier. Uh, you're going to need to pull the thrust washer off of the old cap here. It should be attached. If not, it'll be inside your carrier still. You just take this off. You can reuse the old one or you can buy new ones. I'm also going to be coating it with a little bit of uh, grease, high temp grease. That's just what I'm going to use. And then I'm also going to lather all the teeth on both the ends with the splines and the teeth here with a little bit of grease too, just to uh, help uh, for the breaking process. So I've got everything lined up. The thing I like about the torque locker is really there's, well, there's four pieces of metal here and two springs. That's it. That's all 
that you have. It's probably one of the simplest lockers I've seen to install. If you have something that you don't have to pull the gear out or the whole carrier and remove the gear. Still not that complicated, but kind of a pain. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start installing. Let's pull this other, try not to mess this up. He's kind of suction on, a little bit of a pain to pull off. I'm gonna clean off the old oil. Might be better to replace these with new ones. I don't know. I am replacing the cross shaft pin because really this is kind of the biggest strength or the fail point, you know, on these kind of lockers. Said, I'm just going to be adding a little bit of grease to the contact areas. Try to keep these as clean as possible if you can. Grease to the splines. A little bit of grease to the top of this thrust washer. Hopefully that's the right name. If not, somebody will tell me. thing with the grease is it's going to help keep the thrust washer onto your end cap here. And I'm just going to slide that right in. Should drop in, maybe. There we go. Now the tricky part because I have it out of the vehicle. Supposed to slide this girl in. I'm going to hold her up top from the back side. The instructions say to install one closer to the ring gear first, so I'm just going to follow it even though we don't have a ring gear on. It says to make sure the two uh, open holes are showing, not the protruding uh, notches. I'm not really sure what to call those. So I've got those out. Another thing the grease does, it's holding the whole top piece in without me having to hold it in. So now I can match up the spline of the gear itself and should slide right in like butter. Match the gear up. Now we have the whole assembly in. 
All we have left to do is these two springs and the cross shaft pin. Looks like they go in the side here. It's a little notch. All right, the instructions say you can either install these with a screwdriver and just try and finagle that thing in there or collapse the spring with a set of pliers and try and partially install it and then push it in the rest of the way with a screwdriver. In my head, putting it in with a screwdriver shouldn't be that hard. But I guess we'll find out. Let's see if I send this thing across the garage. springs are pretty tough. blocking you too much. Oh yeah. Using a pick where I just have a straight pick. I got on this little notch here and just lift it up. It's not in all the way. But now I should be able to just push it in the rest of the way with the end of a screwdriver. I heard it snap into place. Looks like we have engagement. Now I'm just going to rotate it around, put the other one in. I like how easy this is. I know, I think it's Lockrite. They have a deal where you put the spring and pin, they have a spring and pin, and you collapse it, and there's like a little metal deal that you can put in so it holds the spring down. You assemble the whole thing and then just pull off the pin and then it automatically installs that way. I like that design too, but I like how little amount of parts there are. I'm interested to see how well this does off-road. Alright, I got the last spring in. Didn't have to struggle too much longer. So the next step going to be to install install your cross shaft. Right. I have a new one from Yukon. Real quick. Yukon. Man, they do have a better design. So Yukon actually has two holes on either side. I can't tell. It looks like one hole might be larger than the other. There's probably two different styles maybe. I got, a, I got the old cross pin. Oh yeah, there is. So there's two different holes. So I know I need to make sure that this hole lines up with the hole in the case itself. And I'm going to lather this up with some grease, slide it through, make sure the hole lines up, hopefully, and then send the pin through.
The nice thing about the Yukon one too is they've got a, I think the word is chamfer around the opening. That way if it's super close but not on, me setting the pin through should line it up perfectly. I'm going to grab a flashlight. Put it underneath here so I can look through the hole and see a light. Because I punched, I'm reusing the same pin. That might not be cool to some people. I'm uh, I chamfered the edges here to make it easier to install. I think some people put stuff on here, but Ooh, I don't know. You know, I'm gonna put just a little bit of blue Loctite on. A little bit of blue, just to make sure. Stays in place. Just because it'd be pretty dumb to lose this pin and trash everything. Just for this little part. This little 50 cent part. Started with the butt just because I think it might be a little easier. I don't know. Now that she's in a little bit, Ooh. I do not want to hammer on the bearings. So I'm going to transfer. Here, I can hammer down on this, and I'm not hammering on the bearings, I'm just hammering on the case. I'm kind of doing, doing it visually how I pulled it out of the case originally. Make sure it's within spec. All right, the center gap spacing needs to be between uh, 0.145 and 0.175. I'll see if you can actually read that there. I can use feeler gauges or I'm going to attempt, this probably won't be the most, we'll see if we can get it accurate. I've got a digital caliper, make sure she's zeroed out. Point one four six. Ooh, that's right on the money for being almost too tight. Let me try it one more time on the other side. One five one. Okay, and I'm just going to do it a third time on the other side, just to be safe. 
All right, that's close enough for me. All right, next step, reinstall the gear. Uh, like I said before, make sure the lines line up. That way you don't have to redo anything. It's the closest you're gonna get. Uh, I accidentally stripped the bolt because of bad information I found online. I've got a grade eight and a grade five. The grade eight is just a little too long. The grade five is just a little bit too short. So I'm gonna just take off maybe uh, 0.2 inches, maybe 0.1, we'll see. I'm just gonna try and match it up as close to that. Fix the threads from where I ground down, and then we're just gonna send it. Caught good enough. All right, I put the ring gear back on. I uh, didn't really have to struggle. It's kinda cold out. I left the carrier out and I set the ring gear in front of my shitty garage heater for about uh, 15 minutes while I worked on some other stuff. I cleaned all the bolts off with a little bit of mineral spirits and then I have been slowly putting them in with red Loctite, right? 271 red Loctite. I'm putting them in by hand with a socket wrench not very tight and then I have a torque wrench that I'm going to use after I get everything in somewhat snug and torque it to 55 foot pounds is what I'm reading on, on uh, Dana's website. <laughs> 